Okay, so the car is starting to look pretty good actually, it's starting to come together nicely. The first part of the electronics I need to do is uh, the servo mount, uh, which basically is going to be up in this area, but the servo I'm going to go and use is the Hi-Tech HS6635HB, digital torque. Uh, it says right here that it's got a carbonite gear in it, uh, and is uh, basically delivering 69.43 ounces per inch uh, at 4.8 volts. This weight is uh, pretty much 52.1 grams, it says, or 1.83 ounces. So I just read that off the back, but let's just have a look at it here. I haven't opened it up yet. Just taped on the little piece of information box. I'll crack this puppy open. Okay, so pretty big, actually. Uh, not bad at all. Gonna give me quite a bit of strength. So let's just take this out here. There, that's a good looking servo. I'm gonna be removing the horn and uh, applying uh, this servo saver that I pre-built off camera here uh, and put that to where the horn should be. Uh, and uh, we'll take it one step at a time and mount this in properly uh, so we can get this steering assembly completed. So it just occurred to me that while I was putting on this servo saver, I'll just show you there, that I didn't really explain what a servo saver is to those who don't know. It's basically an impact zone. So if this is controlling the steering back and forth, and this car hits the wall on an angle very hard, the way a servo saver is built is that it has a washer, a plastic washer, that actually has some give so it doesn't sharply turn uh, and burn out the motor on the inside or strip the gears. So this plastic piece actually here will either break or give considerably before it actually hurts the motor. I highly suggest using a servo saver, even though some folks prefer to use the horn, but then they run that risk of hurting the actual servo and having to buy a new one instead of being able to continue running. So anyway, that's an important part that I thought I'd just let you know in case uh, I had some questions later on about it. So I have the servo installed. You can see I've put the servo saver on, I've connected the servo to the vehicle, and put the steering arm, you can see here, I'll just do it slowly because I don't want to burn out the servo. See, there you go. Nice and easy. And of course I can adjust the tires right here with these turnbuckles as well, right? So really straightforward, really simple. I think the steering design of this is just genius. Now keep in mind, I haven't seen a lot of uh, electric cars before. In fact, this is my first build of any electric car kit. I just wanted to have some fun and, you know, really bling it out. Um, but I'm not the first, uh, this isn't my first build just for uh, this type of car. So anyway, let's move on. I gotta put a top plate on here before we can do anything with the ESC and the receiver. So let me put that top plate on. So I've gone ahead and installed the electronics plate here above the servo. The servo can either be held in by the two posts or this special electronics plate that gets screwed in uh, with these three screws. Now, one of the things I'll have to remember is when I put the ESC on here, I want to leave enough room for the receiver, yet at the same time still match it up uh, with the motor. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the ESC uh, and motor combo I'm going to use is actually from Speed Passion. It's supplied to me from Shockwave Motors uh, at Eastridge Hobbies. Uh, this here is called a Drift Master Turbo ESC and motor combo. Now, I did pull some specs in case uh, you guys wanted to know. Uh, the ESC specs, uh, the continuous current is 40 amps. The burst current current is 160. Uh, I can say that it handles all the way up to a 7.5 turn motor or a uh, 4,000 kilovolt. Uh, the input voltage is anywhere from 4.8 to 11.1. Uh, uh, 4 to 9 cell nickel metal hydride or 2 to 3 cell lipo. Geez, that's technical. Yeah? Uh, same, I'll just cover the motor at the same time here. Uh, the can size is a 540. It is a sensorless brushless motor. Uh, kilovolts 4200 uh, and can handle a 2 cell lipo. Uh, I've already put a double sided piece of tape on the bottom and I'm going to place the ESC right at the top corner of that electronics plate, still leaving me enough room for the receiver. You can see here that the wires are actually much longer. I'm going to leave the wires long as I attach them to the motor. Right now that's not a concern for me and I'll just leave them slightly out of the way. Okay, with the ESC attached, 
You know, the start uh, on and off button isn't going to fit in the usual place. I don't mind remounting that somewhere on the side of the ESC or, of course, right on the inside underneath the steering. So, <clears throat> uh, for this week's episode, that's pretty much the last thing I wanted to do. The car is really starting to come together now. It's really starting to look nice. Uh, you know what? I might as well do one more thing to show you guys. Who, who cares? You know, an extra. I have, from 3 Racing... A motor cooler with a fan. You can see here uh, aluminum motor heat sink with electric cooling fan for 540 motors. Now Speed Passion actually speaks about using uh, one of these fans or a motor cooling system even though it has these aluminum fins on it to help with cooling. Now the extra airflow from the uh, fan itself is really going to benefit in cooling this motor at high speeds. So you can see that, look how easy that was. That clipped on just like so. All right, and I'm actually going to tie uh, or attach the wires to the power source when I do the soldering on the battery. And we'll get into the battery next episode. So thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to follow along.